Hi, this is Jim Horn. Okay, we've got another black and white photography vlogcast. And today we've got landscape photographer Kurt Patel. And we're going to look at some of his work. And I think anybody that is interested in landscape is going to love to see some of these images. I think they're, uh, I think they're exceptional. I've known Kurt, known up Kurt. He, uh, he was in a part of our camera club here in Tucson, Arizona. And anytime they had uh, the competition, he always took first place. And no one wanted to compete, <laughs> but always did a great job and always very humble and uh, but really, you know, really has an eye for landscape. But even the landscape photography, as I noticed uh, Kurt's work over the years, has changed a little bit. Um, it's a little bit more um, oh, what you would it, it's. Uh, uh, I don't know quite wor what the word is, but it's, Kurt, it's... Um, graphic. It, uh, more graphic, I think. Yeah, it's graphic. You're right. That's a good way to put it. It's very graphic, and, and it, uh, it comes across exceptionally well. Kurt's got a great eye. So, Kurt, uh, for the audience, uh, uh -huh. how long you been doing this photography do you do you date back to the old analog days or oh wait yeah a long time ago 1968 i got my first camera oh wow 1968 okay. and uh started shooting black and white you know tri x right off the bat that's what i did okay and so you were using uh was it uh was it a larger format camera or yeah uh i bought two nikons in hong kong i was in vietnam uh i wanted to get involved with photography and so i was sort of biding my time i thought well I'll, when i get an r and r i'll go to hong kong and i'll buy some cameras and i did i went to hong kong and i bought two nikons two nikon bodies and two lenses and uh a whole bunch of film and just started shooting and, and uh it just uh, it just kept doing it. So it's, it's been, what is that? I don't know. It's pushing 50 years, I guess, something like yeah. that. Don't, don't, don't age yourself now. <laughs> <laughs> I try to avoid that. <laughs> yes. uh, so you, you, you did put you, so you primarily worked in 35 millimeter. Yes. That, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Super, super. And then you have evolved into the digital Oh, I guess revolution or evolution or yeah, not not all that long ago as things goes. I was a late adapter or adopter. Uh, I think 19, 2010 or 2011, I got first digital camera. Um, I had been shooting medium format also, though. I had gotten a medium format camera and uh, and shot that. And I still shoot it once in a while. I got a digital, a couple of digital cameras and sort of the the film. Film priced me out of the market. Yeah. Film and, and development. Uh, I came home from one trip one time, and I was like, I was five hundred dollars in the film and, and developing, and um, not developing, but printing and the whole whole shit. Yeah. And uh, so I, my wife said, you know what, you could probably buy a camera for that, right? So I thought, well, I'll try a digital camera, and that sort of. I still look back because I still use film, so I still use thirty five. I do use one twenty. Uh, and I do other kinds of processing. I do uh, a platinum palladium processing. Oh, you do? Wow. Yeah, platinum okay. palladium. And then I've gotten into uh, uh, encaustic on photography and, and uh, cold wax on photography. And uh, I do also uh, black and white pigment on vellum, kind of translucent vellum with uh, gold leaf, layered with gold leaf, kind of a specialty kind of thing, kind of like 19th century, they called it uh, oral tone. Okay. Today, you use uh, uh, gold leaf on them, but different different kinds of things they try to do. Wow. Now, are you yeah. developing your own own film? Or you you know, there's a place called Blue Moon up there in Oregon. I know that developed. Oh yeah. Film. Yeah. No, I usually send. Well, there was a time I did. I don't anymore. Yeah. Uh, if I do black and white, I, I send I send the black and white out to a pro lab and have them develop it and print me a contact sheet. And then if I want something, and I've been doing this way before I, I bought a digital camera, I mean, probably after 1990 or so, I was basically getting, getting uh, contact sheets or basically doing transparencies. And then, uh, but from contact sheets, I would, uh, 
I'd have prints made and um, it's sort of the way I did it because I didn't have a dark room. I mean, I had dark room at one time, but that went away a long time ago. Yeah, so I didn't I have access to dark room unless, you know, I went to a high school once in a while, used their dark room. So I did some dark room stuff also, but I uh, wasn't as much interested in dark room as it was in the, in the, uh, uh, the, the getting out and photographing part anyway. Yeah, I think the photograph, and I, I had a dark room for a lot of years, and I think the photographing part, when you look at it, is more fun. Although I have gone back to analog, and uh, not totally, but as sort of a supplement yeah. uh, to, you know, what I'm doing now and the projects that I'm sort of working on. So analog is, a, and I develop my own film, but, and then scan it with my DSLR. That made it easy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, well. Uh, when I, when I do platinum, it's it's kind of interesting because you basically you you can take a digital a digital positive and make a platinum negative. So I make eight by ten negatives. Wow. Analog, but I print them on a computer. So so it's <laughs> it's like you can go either way. You could you know you could take a digital you could take a, a analog negative and make a uh, analog print or you can make a digital print it doesn't matter okay <laughs> scan it and they make a digital print you could take a digital negative and make a you know make a positive and then you can make another negative out of it and use the negative that's what i do i, I use these eight by ten negatives or bigger to make platinum prints wow. which is which is an analog process okay but i start with a i start with a, a digital negative a 35 millimeter digital negative wow. and then i end up with an eight by ten positive print, an eight by 10 uh, negative, which I then use to make a positive platinum print out of. Now, the images that you have in the gallery, uh -oh, Art on, was it Art on Arizona? You, you named Art, it. Artizona. Art, Artizona. It's kind of a play on art and, and Arizona, Artizona. Now, do, are some of those prints, the, uh, the palladiums, are some of those in the, uh, no, the gallery? Those, those are all, no, those are not. They, the person that runs that, she she basically she basically curated that whole site. So she basically picked all the images she wanted, and she was interested in the platinum, but she didn't want to confuse things, <laughs> have too many different choices. So she said, "Well, I'm going to just take some black and white, straight black and white digital prints, and we're gonna we're gonna put those on the website for the time being, and then migrate from there." Okay. So that's what she said. So none of them are on that site. Some of them are on, they're on Instagram. Some of them are on Instagram. Some of them, actually, some of them are, I think, on uh, uh, Smug Mug. Uh, they're in different places. Okay. So, so, and we'll put a link to uh, yeah. where, um, where Kurt's uh, images are. I think uh, I did look at his uh, Smug Mug site. And there's a whole host of different kinds of images other than the images we'll take a look at uh, this afternoon. So, okay, you know what I'd like to do, Kurt? I'd like to take a look at some of those images. So if okay. you can bear with me, we're sure. gonna, we'll cut over. There we go. So do you see this image? Yes. Okay, why? So this is out in the Palouse. And why don't you tell the audience what the Palouse is? Because a lot of people don't know. Well, the Palouse is a, it's a, it's an old um, grain, wheat growing area. It's in uh, Eastern Washington. They've been growing grain there for, well, probably mid 19th century, maybe before. It's, it's an area that uh, historically had a lot of volcanic activity. So the soil is very rich. It's rolling hills, lots of rolling hills. And I'm going to say it's probably, oh, I don't know, 20 miles, 20, 25 miles by another 20 miles. So maybe about 400 square miles of, uh, of wheat area. It's, and it's very, it's, it's one thing, it's, it's wheat, okay? okay. Wheat and, and old buildings. And, and I love to go out to the photograph. It's very, they say, well, I work a sort of graphic. You're able to get some pretty graphic images, uh, simple minimalist kind of images which is i like also i like minimalism yeah i i would say i look at this image here and it is very simple i mean you've got the the white clouds overhead or the white cloud or and then just the you know very beautiful texture and the grass and then obviously in the background you've got those 
that the black trees silhouetted up against the uh, the sky. It's uh, it's a. I know there's a lot of workshops that go on out there, but uh, I think this sort of begins to to capture that area. Yeah, it's a really. I enjoy going there, and you you go to different times of year, and you get different things. That this is in fall. All these images are from post harvest. Uh, the basically fall for them is fall is August. So this was this is August after after the wheat's been uh, cut. Okay, okay. Do you live fairly close to the Palouse area? Uh, no, I live in Portland when I'm in when I'm up north here. So it's about uh, oh I don't know seven hour drive, eight hour drive. Oh, ah, okay. So it's a it's a weekend and overnighter at least. And yeah, and usually I go for four or five days at a time. I would think so. Yeah catch the light right yep yep hey, let's take a look at another image here coming along okay oh <laughs> well you talked about the buildings that are uh lots of yeah i'm into old buildings i, I always have been from my childhood and, yeah. and the history behind that that i used to go finding old find old buildings out in the woods uh abandoned uh, pioneer shacks but anyway this place has a lot of old buildings because it's an old area and this is uh, probably an old schoolhouse. My guess was an old schoolhouse. I don't think it was a church. Uh, it had, you know, it just had, you know, you, I, I go on treasure hunts. When I go out and photograph, it's, to me, it's a treasure hunt. It's trying to find, you know, as, what was his name? Uh, Erwin, uh, uh, yeah, Ella, yeah. Ella, no, he used to say, I try to find, I try to find interesting photos in ordinary places, okay? <laughs> that's what this is. It's, it's, it's looking for, for interesting photos in ordinary places. So it's an old schoolhouse, you know, half falling over. On the right-hand side, that's actually, a, uh, that's actually a truck frame holding it up on the right side. Oh. <laughs> so okay. it's, it's basically the truck frame and the front or rear wheel brake assembly you can see up there uh, holding it up. And as it happened, I just got the clouds right. So it's uh, it's a little washed out on a computer, but it really is rather nice as a print. Yeah, uh, I, I would say the clouds are exactly right because they almost framed the whole thing. It's yeah, a, that was that was it. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, that is that that is great. Oh, okay. Let's take a look at another one here. Oh, talk about graphics. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Is this part so of the, the field by itself wouldn't be much. Um, I mean, it'd be it'd be okay shot, but the but the three or four puffy clouds on the horizon. I mean, oh. when I saw that, this was a you know moonrise over Hernandez shot. I, I slammed on the brakes because the clouds were all moving. Right. So I slammed. I saw the clouds. Slammed on the brakes. <laughs> ran out. Ran up the <laughs> hill, and took three or four shots before the clouds all disappeared. So it's, it's uh, you know, it's one of these, you know, image of, of opportunity kind of thing. That's right. You got out of the car and uh, I have yeah. seen, I've seen Hernandez New, or New Mexico. It's a lot different today than yeah yeah when, it, when Ansel did his stuff. But, you know, I think that's what a lot of, I, I, I think what you're talking about here is, is really stopping the car when you see a shot and you know these these things come along and i think a lot of young photographers think you need a big plan or someplace to go oh. you really don't do you no my you know i would basically i've learned over the years that that when i go to a place i go to a place because i think there's some opportunity to photograph stuff but i all the good shots are never i never think I, I, it's like I, I I don't go there shoot them I, I find them there it's like <laughs> that's why I say it's a treasure hunt it's right. like you you the good shots you never are prepared for you just have to see them and shoot them it's not like you go over there it's not like you go into the Grand Canyon and you shoot the Grand Canyon everybody yeah. does that yeah it's exactly. finding something that's happening at the Grand Canyon that you didn't ever expect that's that's, that's, that's it that's a good that's a good way to put it and I like the uh, the metaphor of a, a treasure hunt. Yeah, uh, because that's what it should be. And treasure hunts when we were kids were a lot of fun. Right? Oh, yeah, I loved it. That's where I got my start is looking at old ruined buildings and in trash piles and somebody, you know, from the 19th century. And I lived out in a place that had a lot of that stuff. Uh -huh. Find old bottles and 
broken knives, and that was just exciting to me as a kid. Where were you Growing born? At, where were you born and raised at, uh, Kurt? Uh, Western Oregon. Oh, okay. Up here, okay. yeah. So, so you know what? Do you know the area well? Yeah, yeah. Well, let's take a look at another shot. Sure. Ah. Uh, it, it, it doesn't make any difference what this is. It's just, it's just beautiful. Well, that's the fields in fall. So the the white part are where the uh, the 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 wheat has been cut, but it's not been the the it hasn't been plowed over. The dark part, the wheat has been cut, and then the rotor tillers have gone through there, the plows, and they plowed them. They plowed it under. So you got two things going. You got the dark is plowed dirt, and the white is what's left over after they've cut the wheat. Wow. Yeah. Now, did you sh shoot this late afternoon, early morning, or do you late afternoon? Late afternoon. Yeah, okay. pretty much late afternoon. Super. And, um, in fact, I've got each one of these shots could be a whole portfolio. I've got probably twenty or thirty or forty shots. Of fields like this, so it could be a whole, it could be a whole portfolio or buildings, um, or or you know clouds or whatever. There's this is basically one of each of the subject matters <laughs> that I photograph when I get to the clues. So there's there's like four or five subject fields that I subject matter that I look for: uh -huh. fields, buildings, uh, interesting cloud formations, weather, that kind of stuff. Wow. Uh, I was going to say I had uh, Melody McVorder on from uh, Santa Fe about three, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, and and had another guy from a street photographer from New Jersey on last week. Uh, he was he had done a book, and Melanie was sort of a photo book and not sort of she is a photo book uh, consultant, and I was just sitting here watching these. And uh, uh, have you ever considered a photo a uh, photo book of some of the Palou stuff? Or yeah, I have. It's uh, there's a lot of stuff out there. Uh, yeah. In general, the the Palouse gets photographed a lot. Yeah, the trick is finding an image. It's like anything else. It's, it's like finding an image that is sort of unique and interesting that nobody else has seen before. And I've got some like that, but uh, I mean, I've thought about putting them into a book. I just haven't gotten around to it, but. Yeah, well, it, it takes, I, I put a book together for out, it, out in uh, Traverse City, out in Sleeping Bear Dunes, but it takes a, a lot of work. It does. <laughs> it's not, yep. it, and you gotta know, you gotta, you know, it, it, yeah, it takes a lot of work, so. Anyway, I'm going to go on this one. Sure. I, this one is on your smug mug, and I love this one. Yeah, I mean, this is almost this, spir is, this is almost spiritual. <laughs> it's what I I thought so too. This is another slam on the brakes. We were going somewhere else. I was with another photographer. Yeah, and we were going early morning. I mean, six o'clock, something like that. And we were we were going we were going from point A to point B, which is ten miles away. And we drove by this thing and I said, oh, hold it, <laughs> slap them <laughs> on the brakes. This is the shot. Actually, this is the shot of the trip. And it was like, how do you, you, you can't expect something. Now it's not even there anymore. It's gone. You know, it's one of these things where, wow. hey, I shot it. It's not there anymore. Wow. Uh, so what is it? Well, you know, I call it, I call it Circe's gate or Circe's door or Circe's gateway. It's, you know, Circe, the god of grain. And my guess is, in, in fact, I got about 100 shots of this. I stayed there for two hours photographing this thing. We spent all morning photographing this, trying to wait for a gust of breeze oh. to move the curtains. Uh huh. And not too much, just enough to photograph. And I got 100 bad shots of this and a couple of good ones. But the whole, the whole idea was to get the, the curtains moving a little uh -huh. bit, but not, not flapping in the wind like a plague. And uh, wow. it just took hanging around for, for, uh, for a couple hours. You, you actually hung around for a couple hours. Oh yeah, I was there two yeah. hours at least. Wow. As I say, it's, it's not there anymore. You can't go yeah. back to photograph it, it's gone. Wow. Now my guess is people have said, you know, I, I particularly like, I think it's very spiritual. Oh. And it's, you know, uh -huh. it, I often say, I try to photograph things that aren't in the image. And people look at me a little crazy, but that's what I'm trying to do. I mean, the photograph is of a little gateway someone built. 
Okay, right. what, what, what's the content? I mean, what, why is it there? What does it mean? Nobody knows you sort of build your own scenario, but my guess is maybe somebody, you know, the daughter of somebody that owns the land decided to have her marriage there or something. Yeah. So maybe it's a place where they got married and with the, you know, with the, uh, with the fields in the background. I don't know. It could be anything. But the, now, before I gave you those five pictures, I was going to go on another theme, and that was five images of things like this image that I found spontaneously driving down the road that all are things that you'd never, you know, it's not like you're looking for them. They're things you just have to notice as you're driving around. And, uh, but they're all in different areas. So it, it sort of fragments it in terms of where it's from. But, uh, but this is one of the things from the Palouse is like, you don't know what you're gonna find there. But I drive around six o'clock in the morning to six o'clock at night for five days. Literally, wow. at, it, it, we're on the road, these dirt roads, I might add, the dirt yeah. roads, like for you know, 12 hours looking for stuff. Yeah, photography, uh, and I'm gonna cut back now. Uh, photography isn't necessarily all about finding the shot instantaneously, is it? I mean, it's, yeah. uh, it's, uh, oh, there we go. Let me move my thing over here. Um, so, wow. I mean, so you spend 12 hours and I think that's good for the audience to understand that these things don't come quickly. How many years have you been going out there? Well, uh, I've, I've been out there, uh, three times for about five days each. Okay. Uh, but the same is true for a lot of areas. I mean, I, I did, I shoot underground bunkers, underground munition bunkers in Puget Sound in the Columbia River area. You know, there's the, the Puget Sound area has about uh, 12 or 15 uh, huge uh, naval guns emplacements that are still there. Oh. And they were protecting the mouth of the Columbia and they were protecting the mouth of, of the uh, Puget Sound area from enemy, enemy ships from the Civil War, World War I, World War II. So I go up there, I've been shooting there for five years, five, actually five, six, seven years. I go up there almost every year and shoot the underground ammunition bunker. So that's another whole series of things. <laughs> but it's like you go back time and time again and see what's, see what's different, see what the light's different, see something's different. But well, it's, it's uh, keep on doing it. Familiarity uh, always helps, doesn't it? I mean, it sure does. Yeah. Yeah. It uh, if you know a place, you, you know, you, you, yeah, it familiarity helps. You got to keep going back and back. I think the travel log stuff is always difficult to do because you go there once and then that's it. You really don't experience the place, do you? Yeah. No, no, not really. Yeah. So for the for the gear nerds that I have listening, what, what kind of gear are you using now? Well, I, in digital, digital, uh, yeah. digital for, for, uh, uh, DLSR, basically Nikon, I use a Nikon 850, uh, and, and all the, you know, all the, the holy trinity of lenses, <laughs> of lenses, yeah. but Nikon 850. And then I have a, an older Nikon 700. I use it as a backup or for, for when I'm shooting it dark in the darkness. I also do a lot of Leica stuff. So I got two or three Leica cameras. I shoot Leica, uh, both film and digital. Yeah. Um, and I like that an awful lot. Uh, Mamiya, uh, six, seven, uh, a 120 film camera. I still, still got that. Still use some 120 film. Uh, I, <laughs> That's good. I, it's like, I don't get rid of anything. So it's not like I have no equipment. I just have had a lot of years of <laughs> being able to well, buy it. But, but really the equipment that you've described, you don't need to get rid of, right? I mean, no, it'll no. last forever. The, yeah. the, the D700 was my first digital camera. And uh, I had a couple in between, but I gave, you know, got rid of them because they weren't much good. But D700, I love. It's just, uh, you know, 12 megapixel camera. That, you know, it just does it. <laughs> so it's whatever. Yeah. You know, that's funny. I mean, I think we've gotten a little megapixel crazy and uh, I, you know, 12, 24, 20, it all seems to do the job, doesn't oh, it? Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, you know, it's not, I'm not a, I'm not a, what they call them, pixel counter. I'm not a pixel counter. Yeah. The other thing is I'm not a, about absolutely perfect images. I mean, and that's not, that's not a bad thing. You can be a photographer and, 
I have a goal of perfect images, but you know, I, I like to say, Ansel Adams had a saying that uh, the worst thing in the world is a is a extremely sharp image of an extremely foggy idea. <laughs> and, right. and, uh, and I sort of subscribe to that. It's not about having a perfect picture. It's having a perfect, you know, it's having an image that has some interest, I think. Yeah, so. exactly. You can always work it in the dark room and make it work. And, yeah. uh, you know, you, it sort of brings out your vision. Exactly. Unfortunately, today we're in the, you and I, and we're obviously analog guys, but we're in the digital world now. I always yeah. find it easier to, when I scan the, or when I DSLR the digital negatives, uh, the workflow in the post is a lot easier than when we were in the dark room. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, you were pretty much stuck. Uh, well, I mean, you could do, obviously you could do cropping, you could do some burning and, you know, you got people that were cutting, you know, they were cutting uh, uh, templates over things to, you know, to, to dodge and burn and it layers. I mean, basically, the dark room yeah, exactly. layers. <laughs> you know, and uh, people that never were, you know, they've never done film, you know, but they do, they do Photoshop. They know layers. Well, they did layers. They did layers in the dark room too. They just did it with cutouts. So That's right. It took a lot longer. <laughs> yeah, it sure did. A lot longer. Well, Kurt, I certainly appreciate this conversation. <laughs> I appreciate you, appreciate you coming on. It is so. Sure. This will be on the uh, YouTube channel and um, it will also be on Facebook and we'll have it also on the Apple podcast. And, uh, and then I'll, you know, I'll mention your page and so forth. I appreciate co coming on and, you know, maybe in about seven or eight months as we get down the, you know, get through COVID and that kind of thing, you get back on and we go over another portfolio that you might have that, you know, the ones we discussed here, because believe it or not, Kurt, people are interested in your work and they're interested in seeing different things. Uh, they need to be inspired and, uh, and especially the younger photographers yeah, I think, right. and so forth. So, uh, but I appreciate you coming on. And uh, do you have any, if you had to give a younger photographer one thought, you know, what would you, what would you say to them if they were going out today to do some photography? Well, you know, the, it's like, it's not, a lot of people have said this, but I, it takes a years to sort of believe it. And that is, it's, it's really just about light, not about equipment, not even about composition. It's really about light. So you need to go out at times when sometimes you don't want to go out because I mean, the good light can be when it's raining. Some of my best photos have been done in storms where there's a, a leading light edge or a trailing light edge where some things are lit, some things aren't lit. And uh, so it's, it's uh, you know, you got to go in different weather and you got to look at light. That's, 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 that's what I think about. Now, it's nice to be in a place where there's some interesting things too. Okay. <laughs> I hear you. Well, that's a, that's a great recommendation. Listen, you uh, hang on the line here, but anyway, you, uh, you take care and I'll end the recording and uh, we'll go.